Hey, what's up team? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology. This video is on the extroverted feeling type and I'm going to teach you how to think like an extroverted feeler, literally. So I'm going to be breaking down some of Dario Nardi's work. I am not Dario Nardi, so if you really want to know this information well, please buy one of his books, you know, uh, look up more of his stuff because it's really good. I'll link down below all the stuff that you need to, to get that information. So starting off, um, I'm going to just explain what an extroverted feeler is, and then I'm going to break down some of the high activity brain regions that actually like fully explain, like, oh yeah, that's, that's an extroverted feeler right there. <laughs> and then I'll talk about some of the regions that have really low activity, actually the least activity out of all types. Pretty interesting. And then some notable regions after that. And then after that, um, kind of the differences between ESFJ and ENFJ based on two different regions that they usually have higher activity in. Um, just kind of a forewarning, uh, Everybody's brain is going to be different. It has different wiring and stuff like that. It's, it's got, you know, different uh, Experiences and stuff attached to it, right? So it's going to favor different parts a little differently. Nobody's brain is going to be exactly the same But there are a lot of similarities uh, according to his research And so I want to get that information out. All right, so starting off, an extroverted feeler is, well, basically someone who looks towards other people to see the, the values and beliefs in other people, listens to those, and then takes action in the outer world, usually towards harmony. Uh, and the, the three main regions that extroverted feelers use um, and have higher activity are going to explain that. So first you have FP1, it's right up here in the front of your left, uh, just around your forehead. And that region helps you make decisions, helps you explain and decide. This is where <laughs> judges have a lot of high activity. Um, perceivers, like actual perceiving dominance, will have higher activity in FP2. But so this FP1, this kind of chief judge style is like whenever you're you're making a decision or explaining that decision it's going to have high activity like this is the the color that I like I like green because of this this and this that region is going to be active when you're doing that it also um, stops new input from coming in which is pretty interesting so uh, it helps you make that decision it helps you just all right, we're done listening. Here we go. Now it's time to to act on that. Um, and the introverted feelers that I talked about in the last video also have that. You know, it's because they're introverted judges. They use introverted feeling as their dominant function. So um, yeah, that region is going to have a, a lot of activity. It's going to help them actually act on <laughs> stuff. <laughs> These birds are going crazy. Okay, I'll just uh, continue talking. So you have this decision-making style. Great. And then also you have T3, um, which is, I believe, over here. And this is the precise speaker, as he calls it. It helps you speak clearly in the, the chosen words that you really want to use. And it helps you also listen for other people's words that they specifically choose. Um, I play a rogue. I played a rogue. Two different sentences. Played has the connotation that hey, you stopped at some point or you changed to another class, you know, another game, you quit the game, whatever it is. So listening to those different kind of, um, the different tells that people use helps you understand what they want, what they like, and stuff like that, right? It's, it's completely um, 
word focused, verbal focused. And it's, like I said, it's listening for those keywords and also helping you um, speak with proper grammar. Something that maybe I'm not great at. And then uh, T5 is another high activity region. And he calls this the sensitive adjuster. Uh, it helps you notice how other people are responding to your actions. So you can see, you know, you do something and then you see this little twitch in their face and you're like, oh, that person doesn't like me. <laughs> that's that T5 reason, region that's kind of lighting up and getting more ac activity. And um, it suggests, you know, that if that region has high activity, then you will kind of try to adapt yourself. You'll try to change your actions to work with other people, you know, because you're always looking for how they are responding to you. Um, the ENFJs I know definitely deal with that. I've heard them talk about that. Like this person, you know, made this kind of little remark or had this kind of like body language shift and, you know, I knew right then and there that they didn't like me or they did like me or they were thinking this. It just helps you read that social situation. And in that sense, often helps to promote harmony. So right there, you have a very clear, hopefully, definition of an extroverted feeler and, and kind of those three brain regions that are making them largely who they are in terms of extroverted feeling. Um, one little side comment, the uh, ISFPs also uh, with this region, the T5 region, they have a lot of activity and they're looking for like how other people are are um, thinking about them and what you know just the whole vibe of the situation within the other person and themselves and um, but it doesn't mean that they have to act on it <laughs> so I guess the ISFPs will like see it and they'll be like yeah this person is thinking this but uh, eh, what are you gonna do <laughs> kind of like a very introverted feeling thing like if I don't feel like acting on this then I'm not going to. But the extroverted feelers are more wired towards acting on that harmony and making those decisions quickly and explaining themselves in high value laden like vocabulary. Okay, so you got those those high activity regions. Some of the low activity regions, uh, he said that uh, zero one and zero two in the back, uh, they're very visual. They're they're used. Let's see. I'll I'll explain them. Uh, O1 is the visual engineer, as he calls it, and it basically helps you see an object, for example, and kind of like Blender or 3ds Max or some editing program, kind of like explode it, rotate the pieces around, and put them back together. See how they fit in a very like engineer style. Um, so it's, it's very precise in that sense, but it's visual. I don't know if it has a language component or not. Uh, can't look it up right now. <laughs> um, and then O2 is the right brain side of that and it's abstract, it's holistic. Uh, he called it the abstract impressionist and it's looking for the whole theme, how these colors work together and um, how just these objects fit aesthetically, not for functionality. These two regions happen to be the lowest out of all types. Um, and extroverted feelers use them when they meet new people pretty interesting. So you meet somebody and then you instantly get a lot of activity back here and you're trying to like put this person's actions and their body language and their face into some sort of like thematic <laughs> category and kind of take apart the different pieces to understand like who is this person. It gives you a really good 
impression on who they are. And then the activity is just low after that. So <laughs> a lot of interest when you meet new people and then it's just, it dies down. Of course, like I said before, people are going to have different, um, you know, brain wiring and it's going to maybe make some people use it more often than others, but he said that they have the lowest activity there. Also, FP2, I'm just gonna throw that one in there because that's uh, this side, and that's for like extroverted perceivers, introverted judgers. It, it would be introverted perceivers, but like in the MBTI code, if you have a J at the end, that's gonna get confusing. <laughs> if you are a dominant perceiver, you use introverted intuition, introverted sensing as your dominant function, or extroverted intuition, extroverted sensing as your dominant function, you're going to have more activity there, and it's open, it's, uh, he calls it the process manager or the uh, vigilant taskmaster, and it's, it's allowing things to just keep working in the background, it's not cutting off input, it's exploring for new information and trying to see what other stuff is out there, and it gets you excited too. Because you're always like, oh, what's next, what's next, you know, kind of <clears throat> going further and further away, <laughs> like perceivers do sometimes. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, also, uh, let's see, it, FP1, the high activity region up here, the chief judge, um, can keep people happy because it's cutting out new input, it's stopping them from introspecting, and it's it's just helping them continue to make decisions based on how they feel and think. But FP2 kind of lets you, well, it lets you introspect, lets you take in information, and some of that information is bound to be negative information as well, and, and kind of see how that fits with you. And because of that, it can lead to more sadness and uh, uh, the blues. <laughs> so that was interesting. Um, kind of gives you some more insight onto the extroverted feelers. Now some of the notable regions, I have four of them. Extroverted feelers usually have high activity in one or two of these regions. And this gives them this like highly intellectual feel a lot of times. Not all of them, not every time, but it does have that within it. And so the regions, I'm just going to explain them. And uh, let's see, they have P3. P3 is the tactical navigator. It basically helps you know where you are within the world. So it helps with knowing distance and like, um, can't think of the word. Basically, to know how far to throw a ball or something like that, it helps you kind of see the world as this visual kinesthetic grid and um, act in according to that and like identify objects. He said, uh, if you're blindfolded and you're holding an object, this P3 region is going to be the one that's activated and looking for like what is this? I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, he said it's it's kind of like, it's going to be highly active in people who, for example, like a basketball player, because they have to keep track of where they are, where the ball is, where their teammates are, where the opponents are, where the lines on the court are, where the hoop is, like all this information in a visual, kinesthetic, spatial way. One more thing kept forgetting p3 this tactical navigator um, like I said it tells you where you are within the the world um, if you have a lot of activity you're going to feel disconnected from everything else in the world if you are like meditating or you just naturally have low activity you're going to feel at one with the world which is pretty interesting maybe that gives some insight into extroverted feelers kind of always looking to how other people view situations because they don't feel 
connected in that sense. I'm not really sure. Gives you something to think about though. Also the P4 Strategic Gamer helps you weigh risks and rewards against a bunch of different options. And that is going to, let's see, that's going to, um, like for example, if you're playing poker and you have a hand, you're thinking like, well, what are my odds of winning this based on all these other calculations? That's what this P4 region is doing. Um, it helps with math as well. So that's another like highly logical region. Um, F3, F3 is the deductive analyst. Let me check, yep. And uh, basically this is, it helps you deduce things linearly. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Um, he explained it with a very nice metaphor of, you start at like the base of a tree trunk and it goes up and then it branches off into all these different branches, right? And then one big branch is gonna branch to a smaller one and then a smaller one and smaller one. So when you're deducing things, it has this kind of like, that same feeling of like, I got this information, I'm gonna follow it down this path and then go over here and here, nope, didn't work. Then you backtrack and you try again, try a different path. So this is um, very kind of like Sherlock Holmes type style in my mind. Um, and then the F4, did I say F? Yeah. The um, expert classifier. The expert classifier helps you put information into categories. Makes sense. Uh, he explained it like a, like a mailbox, like an apartment complex mailbox like grid. So you have everybody's name and information there and then you're trying to figure out where to put that information. Um, I explained it in the last video using his example as identifying a uh, dolphin as a mammal or a fish. Using this region is going to help you do that. And it takes a lot of time. It takes time and, and expertise to actually fully fledge out these categories and really know what you're talking about. So um, that's another very highly technical region. And um, what else? Let's see. My, my ENFJ friend definitely uses the F4, the expert classifier, and the P4 strategic gamer. Like when we play um, any board games or anything like that, he's weighing all these different odds all the time. He's really good at it. And also I feel that he can classify these things really quickly, which also relates to humor. Um, if you can connect kind of these abstract ideas together, that's usually a funny thing. <laughs> that's kind of what humor is a lot of times. Um, and he's definitely got that. Like he'll just pull out these weird connections that are just hilarious. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, the ESFJs are going to, I thought have more like P3, the tactical navigator, trying to figure out where you are spatially within the world. Um, and also uh, F3 the deductive analyst because it just felt like they're uh, they're trying to pull in all this like strategy and resource to try to figure out where their um, and th where their understanding is going maybe not though I mean that was just kind of my impression of that p3 the tactical navigator also deals with um, the proprioception like your internal feelings and sensations on the right side of your brain because it is on your left side. Um, and introverted sensing definitely is in tune with those internal sensations. Funny that, right? <laughs> okay, so anyway, so the ESFJ is more left brain usually. Um, 
I say usually, I think he just said it's more left brain, but the um, other two regions that they use are uh, C3, which is the factual storehouse, which um, basically is in charge of retrieving batch memories, kind of like if you're loading a video that you have saved on your computer. It's not streaming, it's just like, that's how memory works apparently. It's just, boom, this is a batch memory, and then you play it, kind of like a video. Um, and it's very good at recalling this factual information, like proper names, dates, percentages, numbers, all that stuff that I'm awful with, an ESFJ is going to likely be better with. Um, my dad is very good at it. My ESTJ friend is really good at it. So there you go. <laughs> um, it helps you also draw graphs and charts and things like that. Um, and work step by step wise physically through an action like um, <laughs> you open the package. You take out the Oreo, you grab your fork with your right hand, you softly push it through the nice creamy inside, then you, you know, move your left hand to grab the glass of milk, and then you dip it in, wait for the bubbles to stop, and then eat it. So, like that. <laughs> uh, but probably a lot more sophisticated than my example that I just used. Um, also, the F7 region which is the quick analogizer or the imaginative mimic. Uh, it helps you mirror other people's behavior. Very introverted sensing type thing. Uh, introverted sensors are great at this kind of looking at something, seeing how somebody does it, and then practicing it and doing it. And then kind of refining that and making themselves very good at it. So that was pretty cool. Um, this. F7 region also helps you kind of look at things in different contexts, try things out in different contexts and see how it relates to yourself. Um, he called it like the holodeck. Uh, I'm not a Star Trek guy, but um, yeah. So you can kind of run through these simulations of being in a different context and see how it worked out and how it affected yourself which is also an extroverted intuition thing. An extroverted intuition would be the tertiary, the third function of an ESFJ. Extroverted intuition. So I, there's so much connection within this. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, all right, I think that's enough for the ESFJ. The ENFJ has um, another little kind of quirk to it. First of all, it's, it's more right side, which means it's more holistic, uh, which is an intuitive thing. And also it uses cortical circuits, um, which is basically this a connection of like several regions that work very well together because they've been practiced many, many times together. So one example he gave um, was specifically for ENJs. So ENFJs and ENTJs, this is one cortical circuit that they use a lot, which is FP1, explaining, deciding, making decisions, into T3, the precise speaker. So kind of picking up the correct words and grammar and stuff that you are either listening to or wanting to say. And then P3, which is the tactical navigator, kind of looking at the situation visually, I guess, and um, seeing where you are physically within that. Um, and then also the F8, which is the, I don't know what he calls it. Oh no. Uh, basically it helps you determine like your, your favorites. <laughs> and then it goes back to FP1. So it's just this like loop of very connected, very quick acting circuitry. And that kind of gives them this quick intuitive feel. And it also causes problems if this information comes to them 
or they're in a situation that they can't actually um, use that same wiring because then it just doesn't work within that circumstance. C4 is the flowing artist. So C3 was the factual storekeeper on the left side. C4 is going to be the holistic kind of version of that. And the flowing artist is what he calls it. And it's basically, it's not step-by-step -step movements um, and, and kind of learning that structure of how to do it, but it's more rhythmically. It's like he said it would be used in dancing and piano and stuff like that. Um, and also helps you recall like the most beautiful scenery you've ever seen it's it's not factual it's not like um, numbers and dates and stuff like that it's just like the the image of what it is and it's without words so that's a more holistic more flowing um kind of thematic approach to to looking at something and recalling this information um and then the t4 T4 is the intuitive listener, and this is the region that I was getting a little confused with, with F8. Um, this is the region that helps you weigh people's intent and helps you look for words that really resonate with you. Um, I explained before in the introverted feeling video, like the word gaijin or um, a musician and the word music or my music, that region would light up apparently. And it also helps you sense phoniness within other people. Um, this is definitely something my wife and ENFJ feels a lot. And definitely has a lot of activity in this region because she's always like she goes for that first impression using 01 and 02, I guess, and then probably goes to T4 and is trying to just understand is this person phony or not? and if she can trust them. Pretty interesting. This region also um, leads to hostility and anger if um, the other regions, if FP1 doesn't block it, I guess. Um, I think I said that right, yeah. So that's kind of interesting too. It's just connected to your own kind of um, what resonates with you and those kind of keywords that, that hold a lot of meaning to you, listening for tonality and stuff like that, and possibly exploding in rage and anger, <laughs> uh, which could give some insight into ENFJs, maybe ESFJs too, but I don't, I don't really know. Um, but going from kind of this good mood to bad mood. <laughs> All right, so in the next video, I'll go over introverted thinking and look forward to that next week. Thank you very much for watching. If this was helpful in some way, please like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.